Interesting that you say Go rather than Python. Would you start with Python, then go to Go, or is it just like go straight to Go? So I think Python is easier on the syntax for new people, right? I think that um, Python is sometimes easier to understand. There's a million examples of writing all kinds of software in Python as well. It is our... Uh, our next book, which is Black Hat Python. <laughs> you're, you're always ahead of me, Jason. That's great. I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so no, no, Justin no. That's, seats, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Go on. Sorry. And really, these topics don't get talked about a lot um, when people are like, oh, I want to get into security, right? And there are a yeah. hundred little offshoots of what you can do. And and no conference talk I've ever seen maps it out really well to say, okay, well, like, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, maybe you could be one of these people. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff, maybe you could be one of these people. You've got to ask yourself the question, who do you trust? Would you trust a company such as Google with your private data? That's a choice you've got to make. For me personally, when I am looking at a product, I see what the experts in the field recommend. Experts in the privacy space use and recommend ProtonMail. That's why I'm happy to have them as a sponsor on my channel. And what's really interesting, when I read books such as this, How to Hack Like a Legend, or Ethical Hacking, A Hands-On Introduction to Breaking In, or Linux Basics for Hackers, or Extreme Privacy, What It Takes to Disappear. Michael Basil wrote this book, highly respected. Occupy the Web wrote this book. And when I interact with Occupy the Web, that's the email service that he's actually using. And we discuss that in multiple videos on my channel. Proton Mail secures your email to protect your privacy. I don't know, but it's insane the way the world's going, where governments or companies have access to so much data about us. I think it's time that we pull that back and have our privacy as much as we can once again. Proton is based in Switzerland. Privacy laws, data protection laws are a lot stronger in Switzerland than they are in the United States. So that's a really good thing. They are open source, well known, provide end-to-end -end encryption have millions of users using their products. But for me, the reason why I'd recommend them, the reason why I have them as a sponsor is because of books such as these, because of the people in the cybersecurity space that I interact with, they actually use Proton Mail. So big thanks to them once again for sponsoring this video. Big thanks to them for sponsoring my channel. Use my link below to sign up to Proton Mail and get a 20% discount. Hey everyone, it's David Bombal back with the amazing Jason. Jason, welcome. Hey everyone, how you doing? It's great to have you, Jason. You've done some amazing videos, but I'm really excited about this one. It's 2024. I want to know, and I'm sure many, many people want to know, what are the best books and resources that I should get or you know buy or have a look at in 2024? I know that we talked about this a little bit off stream uh, at the end of the last kind of uh, segment we did together. And yep. It is something I'm, I'm super passionate about. You know, I see so many of these lists out there that omit yep. a couple of like my really favorite resources. And so today I brought so much stuff for everybody. It's a little bit of information overload, but uh, I promise you, if you if if you looked at every single resource I'm going to give you today and you were, you know, in that cusp of being like a network engineer or an IT person and you can grasp all of these learning resources and at least try them, each one of them a little bit. I promise that you you will be well on your way into working in application security, pen testing, information security, you know, um, into security in general. So um, this is what I recommend straight out of my own class that I teach to my students is the resources they should bookmark. And so I, I brought you everything today out of that. I love that. I mean, we'll I'll, I'll link your course below. Everyone who's watching, if you can afford it, go and sign up. Jason does an amazing job. Live training, right, that you do like four times a year, is it? Yeah, four times a year. For bug bounty hunters and pen testers, it's uh, it's pretty cool. And then this is the same kind of stuff that we teach all of our juniors at ButterBot too, when we're getting them on the red team. And it's like, have these things bookmarked, ready to go, because you never know when you're going to need to refer to a print resource of some sort. So. And you mentioned the word print there, and we were discussing offline. You don't have all of the books, physical books with you for some reason, right? No. So I wanted to like hold them up, you know, and be like, hey, yeah. I have this book. But uh, the problem is, is that especially this one, the first one on the screen is the Web Application Hacker's Handbook. Many of my books, you know, when I have juniors or new people that I'm trying to mentor in the scene, like they end up giving, you know, I end up giving them to borrow to the to the people, right? And then I never get them back, which makes me <laughs> supremely happy, supremely happy as like an educator that I don't get them back. But I never have a physical copy in my house. Um, you know, it's funny story is, is one of my one of my best friends is Daniel Meisler, who's been in information yep. security forever. And the, the way I met Daniel was through this book that uh, we're going to talk about right now is I went to the live class associated to this book many, many years ago at Black Hat, the security conference. And at the wow. end of that class, they do a CTF. They have you pair up with another person in the CTF. And so I looked around the room to see like who I wanted to pair up with. And I saw this dude 
who had this book, the Web Location Hacker's Handbook, and the binding was just like, you could tell he had cracked this book thousands of times, right? And it's just like, <laughs> it's so, it is so worn, the binding of the book. I was like, that's the dude I want to do the class with. And so um, that's how we met, actually, was, was that black hat through this book. So I love that story. I've heard criticism of this book, though, that it's outdated. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. So the Web Application Hacker's Handbook, uh, second edition, is what most of us in the application hacking world would say is like kind of like the Bible of web hacking, right? And so at this point, yes, it was published in 2011. Um, it is, it is, you know, very old, um, you know, as far as, you know, publishing date. The thing is, is that application security volumes haven't really, you know, done a ton as far as, you know, how complex they are or how, how interesting or, you know, how novel the new, stuff is. So I always recommend people to start with the Web Location Hackers Handbook. It has like a wonderful um, plethora of intro topics and um, and also technical depth for the base level of vulnerabilities, right? So you're not going to find another book that's published today that does probably a better job of talking about SQL injection or cross-site scripting or some of these vulnerabilities that you're going to find as an AppSec person. You can start with this and then you can realize, yes, there have been some novel vulnerability classes that have come out that are not in this book. But that is why we're going to talk about kind of what this book turned into, um, you know, for kind of the world. So uh, the authors of this book are Daffod Stutter, Stutter and Marcus Pinto. Um, Daffod runs Portswigger. And Portswigger is the company that makes Burp Suite, a quintessential tool that all yeah. web application hackers will use. Um, and then Marcus Pinto is... Um, is either the owner or um, you know on the leadership team at MDSEC, which is one of the best pen testing companies uh, in the world, based out of the UK. And so when they got together and made this book, uh, you know after they made V2, you know many people requested a V3 and just keep on you know bringing out. And so what this morphed into is that actually Daffod at Port Swigger, they decided that hey you know another print resource might not be the best answer to get people the learning that they need to do, and it might not be updatable as we need it, right? And so what yeah. they created at Port Swigger is the WebSec Academy. And so that is what is really version three of this book and what um, a lot of people go to these days. And so on portswigger.net, you can go down to uh, get a whole bunch of free resources, basically. But um, if you go to like latest content or all content and you just go all topics, basically the web security courses they have here are all templatized and modularized. And you can go into here and learn about your favorite web security topics. And so this is the next version of the book. I don't know if there will ever be a new print version, but they offer it all online for free as a, as a resource. So you could go in here and look at cross-site request forgery. You can see that they do a ton of explanation with sample post requests. They walk you through the vulnerability. And then WebSec Academy also gives um, labs for each section. So there are CTF style labs that you can do for each one of these modules. And so this is what the book has morphed into these days. But you'd still get the book. I would still get the book. Yeah. I yeah. I find it useful to read the original content, right? Like none of these web pages can beat a, a chapter or a whole chapter of research on cross-site request forgery. So I would still get the Web Location Hackers Handbook. I would still own it. And I would still lend it out to a lot of people who are learning. That's great. I think it's I mean, what's great about this is if you can afford a book or you prefer reading in a book, then that's fantastic. But if you yeah. haven't got any money, then you know you can go and study it for free on the website. Absolutely, yeah. So Web, WebSec Academy at portswigger.net is a um, fantastic resource. In fact, I would say you know, one of the probably the best resource right now for learning web hacking out there um, that you can you can consume right now as a, as a new person, for sure. That's great. So the next one that I have is, um, is the OWASP testing guide. And this one is, um, if you've never worked, never heard of OWASP before, basically the Open Web Application Security Project. But it's it's basically a consortium of people who care about web application security, get together, they run this nonprofit called OWASP, and they have a whole bunch of projects under it to help further application security. And this project, the testing guide, the web security testing guide, it is a whole encompassing guide on how to test web applications. It's been through several iterations um, in its life cycle. Started off at version one and currently being developed um, to release version five. And so if you go to uh, the OWASP page for it, you know they can they talk about a little bit about this, but um, eventually you can get to a link which has their most recently published PDF version of the web security testing guide, which is 4.2. Um, 
in so they're working on 4.2 and a major revamp into 5.0. But the web security testing guide is a dense piece of um, content. So it's got a ton about you know pretty much every vulnerability. It's got uh, basically a checklist for testing each section of an application, and it really should be in your bookmarks, and, and you should review it, you know, at some point. It's got specific technologies and methodologies to test those technologies, um, and it is a it is a dense resource. The only small criticism I have about the OWASP testing guide is is sometimes it's it's even too dense of a resource for just like to read, right? Even if you enjoy yeah. reading, right? Like it's it's a pretty dense resource. It's sometimes better used as a cheat sheet is having it bookmarked. And then when you are looking to do a specific thing, seeing what content you have in the OWASP testing guide um, available to you. So that's kind of how I tell my students to use it. And so this is 4.2. 4.2 is the latest PDF version. If you go on the GitHub though, um, the OWASP slash WSTG web security testing guide 5.0 is actually in the works right now. And so you can, you know, if you go to the commits here, you can see there's people writing new content um, pretty much every month and making edits. And so the in progress version 5.0 is actually available for everyone to see as a GitHub repository on their GitHub. And so um, I, you can also use this and just search inside of GitHub here and try to find the topic that you're looking at. Um, and so here, you know, we're looking at the SQL injection page, which has been revamped for the newest 5.0. And so if you want to get the newest um, information, um, I would look at this. I think that they're looking to have the newest version of the um, OWASP testing guide probably out by next year. They have hundreds, hundreds, or maybe not thousands, but, you know, high hundreds of numbers of hackers and AppSec people contributing to this guide. So it is a, a tremendous resource to have in your pocket. So that's sometime in 2024, right? Yeah, sometime in 2024, I would say. And again, I have to ask the beginner questions just to make sure, because I'm sure some people are thinking about this. It's This stuff's all free, right? Yeah, all free, yeah. So, so far, all of the resources I've talked about are free. Well, I mean, not the books, right? If you want to buy the physical book, obviously that costs yeah, you sure. to buy a book, right? Um, but this is free. The OS testing guide PDF is free. And then WebSec Academy, which we talked about, is also free. Okay, so if we go back to kind of the print book resources. Um, the next one I really enjoy is Real World Bug Hunting by Peter Jaworski. So Peter was a uh, bug bounty hunter, or still is, a bug bounty hunter in the bug bounty scene. Uh, and he's been to like a lot of Hacker One live events and Bug Crowd live events. And, um, you know, he's, he's really in that scene, you know, very similar to myself. He did a book on basically taking vulnerabilities that existed in real websites. So like Uber and, um, you know, like a whole bunch of these companies that had bug bounties and breaking them down piece by piece and talking about how the tester approached finding the bug on a real, real world website. Because what you get a lot is, is you have like, you have people learning about finding bugs, um, whatever kinds of bugs, but they have it, you know, they have experience testing in a CTF lab environment yeah. where you know exactly where the bug is because they give you the place where it is. And so this is a really good view of, um, you know, looking at like an enterprise application, right, where you can land on it and have really no idea about where you would go look for a bug. And reading these write-ups and having Peter break them down to you is really useful for you as a new person to understand kind of uh, where they took place and how the, the hacker approached that um, that giant website, basically. That's great. And this is another one that I end up lending out a ton. So uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. So next up on our list, we have Bug Bounty Bootcamp. And um, a yeah. lot of, you know, like the first four of these are Bug Bounty related. Vicky is an amazing hacker, uh, amazing person too. And um, this one is a little bit more recent than um, Peter's book. It basically goes over becoming like a bug bounty hunter, you know, through like some very general skill sets you need as well as finding the programs you want to work on. And then an introduction to the most common types of vulnerabilities bug bounty programs are subject to. And a lot of bug bounty stuff is web applications. So there's a lot of web application stuff in here. There's also a lot of reconnaissance methodology in here, which I'm a very big proponent of. And so Vicky has a lot of that in here too. So this is a really good book if you're just getting started into bug bounty or web hacking um, to, to pick up as well. So next we have um, the Red Team Field Manual. So the Red Team Field Manual is a little dated at this point, but luckily a lot of the tools and techniques when it comes to command line syntax, um, you know, don't change a ton. And so the Red Team Field Manual is basically a collection of useful syntax for Red Teamers to do things when they're on 
internal assessments or assume breach assessments and how to use, you know, the most common tools. And so while it is, you know, a slightly bit old at this point, it is still a desk reference for a lot of uh, cool attacks. Um, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, kind of what the modern versions of this are as well, but it never right. hurts to, um, to have this, um, you know, kind of on your bookshelf and it's got a lot of PowerShell in it, a lot of bash in it, which are, you know, two key skill sets for someone when they're going to, you know, attack an internal network. A lot of times you end up having to build your own tools and script them up yourself. And so, uh, and then you have to know which tools to use on the internal tests. And so this is a, a great, uh, well, field manual for, uh, for a lot of people. The problem is written books, right? As soon as they're printed, they're out of date. Yeah, hacking books are really weird because as soon as you print them, yeah. you know, there could be a new tool, right? Um, yeah. That's that's a big problem. So it's it's why I love books that talk about the underlying methodology of what you're trying yeah. to do rather than focus on a specific tool. I mean, the only tools that have made it through, you know, the life cycle are, is like, like Nmap, right? Nmap is a pretty simple staple. There's a couple others that really lasted many, many years, but there's always new tools coming out on GitHub and, and stuff like that. So talking about the methodology is, is somewhat more useful than talking about a specific syntax or tool sometimes. But this one has more of like the you want to write it yourself style. So like Bash yeah. and PowerShell. And that actually is kind of evergreen as well. The next one is uh, Red Team Development and Operations by Joe Vest and uh, James Tuberville. And this talks about kind of um, how to put together a team, um, how you manage it, how you keep tribal knowledge, you know, together as far as far as building a red team. So I really enjoyed this book, read, reading about how other, you know, people who build red teams grow them and stuff like that. This is more of like a meta book about the industry. So, you know, if you're not on a red team may not be for you, but I really enjoyed this book because it was it was more of a discussion around like, what are the stages you need certain types of roles on your red team, right? You need a web application specialist, you need an external specialist, an internal specialist, a phishing specialist, or social, I guess. And then, you know, at what point do you graduate to a tools developer, right? Like someone who develops yeah. your own tools for you and stuff like that. And it was a really um, interesting conversational book that I, I liked a lot. I'm glad you said that because the books to date that you've shown us are bug bounty related and or web hacking. And it's always one of my questions was like, what about other hacks, you know, other types of hacks? So looking forward to seeing what you've, what you, what, you know, what you have in the pipeline of books. Yeah. Yeah. I've got, I've got some others that are um, focused on some other stuff. Um, so I'm thinking of one now that I might not have opened up here, but maybe, maybe we'll get to it. So, <laughs> so this next one is the operator handbook. And so it is more holistic than just kind of the red team field manual. So it, covers red, blue, and OSINT, you know, kind of domains, but it is very similar to um, the red team field manual as it's a syntax collection. Um, and basically all these useful, like, you know, bash commands and PowerShell commands and things that you can do, not only on a red team side, but also on a blue team side and also from an OSINT side. And so um, this is a very handy cheat sheet. In fact, on the blue team side, some of that syntax, I actually haven't seen categorized really a lot on the web. Um, as much as the red team stuff is. And so I liked this book for a lot of its uh, purple and blue and OSINT style uh, syntax collection for common things you do when you're a blue teamer. Um, and so I liked this one a lot. So this is by Joshua Picolet. The next one is the Tribe of Hackers set of books. And so uh, Tribe of Hackers is by Marcus Carey. He's one of the OGs in the hacking scene, has been doing it forever. And Tribe of Hackers is not a technical um, book uh, per se. It is, and it's also by Jennifer Jin. Um, and it is, it is basically a collection of origin stories of different types of hackers. And so they do one for tribe of hackers, red team. They do one for tribe of hackers, blue team. And so basically it's, it's all these non-standard ways that all of these really popular and, um, gifted security people ended up being who they are. Like what steps did they take? What jobs did they have? What, bit, what big hacks defined their careers? What tools did they write? And it is a really awesome way to like get exposed to the career side and the origin story side of kind of our industry. And so I really enjoyed reading the Tribe of Hackers um, Red Team Edition, but also the Blue Team Edition too. That's great. Our next one is Pentester, the Pentester Blueprint by Phil Wiley and Kim Crawley. Um, and the Pentester Blueprint is also in that vein of, you know, like, how do you start your career as an offensive security person? And what steps do you take? What uh, what do you need? You know, as prerequisite prerequisites to get into security. Um, Phil has you know done a ton of interviews as part of his podcast, and Kim has been in the industry for a long, long time, and led several teams. 
and Phil has been, you know, leading teams and stuff like that too. So what they were trying to distill in this book is, you know, like if you're absolutely new and you want to get into offensive security, here's the prerequisites. Here's, you know, uh, how you interview here is, you know, how you conduct yourself. And it really is a, a really beneficial, like soft skills books around being an offensive security professional that I enjoyed. And, and a whole bunch of new people I've given this to also really enjoyed. Next up is OSINT Techniques and Resources for Uncovering Online Information. Michael Basil in our industry is kind of the godfather of OSINT, basically. He leads a class at Black Hat. He, this is the 10th edition of his book that's out right now on OSINT. And I know you've had a lot of OSINT people on your show. Have you had Michael before? I haven't, unfortunately. And there's a reason for that, which I won't share here. But nothing nothing bad. It's just uh, some stuff that has, has stopped that happening. But hopefully someday, someday I'll be able to interview him. I mean, Michael has a Black Hat course that's been going for years now. And um, his book, OSINT Techniques, walks through, you know, basically fresh techniques to get information about people, businesses, um, different types of entities. Um, and so OSINT comes into play both in red teaming, bug bounty hunting, and is just a valuable tool for pretty much any offensive security um, that you're going to end up doing. Um, even defensive security, too. A lot of people make their you know careers. I, I have a buddy who works at a big company whose his whole job is when a new executive onboards, he has to do a bunch of OSINTs on them to make sure that they're not subject to a whole bunch of um, kinds of attacks where you know they could be threatened yeah. or they have too much information online or their family could be at risk. And so having OSINT chops is really important. And this is probably one of the best print resources for OSINT techniques that exists online. The next one is a new one, and it's more in the red teaming kind of vein of things. So this is Evading EDR, the Definitive Guide to Defeating end Endpoint Protection Systems. So this is by Matt Hand. I am three-fourths of the way through this one. I really enjoy it because my current job at Photobot is red teaming. And so one of the things is when you when you get the red team job and you're attacking an organization, the first exploit or fish that you succeed at, it's not really the end of the chain. The next part of the chain is that you have to bypass you know, the fancy antivirus, or as we call these days, the endpoint protection. And so this book goes through tiers of EDR and how they detect uh, what you're doing as a hacker, and then what to do to your payloads and your attacks to bypass um, some of these uh, methods. And so as an introduction to this topic, and it, this topic gets very down the rabbit hole um, when you get into red teaming. this is a very good introduction to this topic for this kind of thing when you're in red teaming for offensive security. Our next print resources is uh, a print resource is Black Hat GraphQL by um, Nick Alex. And so really what you see in, in general in the AppSec world is that uh, a, a number of vulnerability classes that we've been seeing a lot of times in bug bounties or AppSec tests are starting to decline in prevalence because the frameworks that we work with get better and better and better each year. And so you still do see SQL injection and cross-site scripting. What we're starting to see is that newer technologies that have obfuscated some of the front-end code that we used to use in AppSec, basically they're obfuscating you know, the front-end code, but they're part of APIs now. And so there, there are still ways to execute similar attacks against APIs. And so this is one um, where specifically it's focusing on GraphQL. GraphQL is you know, hot hot, hot way to build your APIs right now. And so uh, basically Nick goes over, you know, kind of all of the ways to enumerate an API, find out if it can leak data, um, and, uh, you know, basically look at a GraphQL endpoint if you find one and what it looks like. And he explains all the technology around it. And so this is one I really recommend because you're going to find more and more APIs in your offensive security work that you're going to need to hack. And so it's um, it's not readily familiar as a AppSec tester. You probably are used to poking at forms and parameters and this gives you um a lot of uh a lot of ammo to go after an api especially a graphql one would you use it with Corey's book or is it like can you get to that book straight away that's uh that's the next one on our okay, list right. here is right. uh hacking apis by Corey. so uh so the next one on our list is another api hacking book um by Corey ball probably the most influential just general api hacking book that has come out ever I would say, and the biggest collection of research on how to hack APIs I had seen until I read his book is this book. And so Corey um, goes over not, you know, in, in the previous book, it's very GraphQL focused, all GraphQL focused. This one is all API structure focused. So it could be a REST API, you know, that gets defined by a Swagger file or something like that. It could be even an XML based API, which is kind of dying nowadays. Not a lot of people do that, but Corey goes over everything. Um, and this is 
absolutely one that people should subscribe to. And the great thing about Corey's book too, is he also offers a companion lab and learning certificate program and online learning platform alongside his book um, called, I think it's called API Sec University. That's right. Yeah. Accompanying that with this book is the absolute place you should start if you're ever going to touch an API in an offensive security way. Um, it is a fantastic. Book. So next on the list are some of the um, books I recommend if you're going to do any offensive security work, because eventually you will need to learn how to script. Um, you don't have to learn how to code. A lot of people say, do you need to code in offensive security? And the answer is no, you don't need to be a front end developer or a back end developer. But in many instances of your career, you will need to know how to script together some output or a tool or to tie together a whole bunch of tools to build a methodology, et cetera, et cetera. And so choosing a scripting language that you're going to use um, and then learning about it is really important. So many people these days choose Go because of its concurrency. It's, it's basically more stable. And so a lot of people who write offensive security tools are writing them in Go these days. Many, many of the top hacking tools are written in Go. And so um, if you want to learn how to edit those tools to do things that you need them to do, if you want to learn how to tie together large frameworks of tools or just get around on the command line writing some Go code. Black Hat Go is you know, my preferred book for hackers specifically learning Go. Interesting that you say Go rather than Python. Would you start with Python then go to Go or just like go straight to Go? So I think Python is easier on the syntax for new people, right? I think that um, Python is sometimes easier to understand. There's a million examples of writing all kinds of software in Python as well. It is our uh, our next book, which is Black Hat Python. <laughs> you're, you're always ahead of me, Jason. That's great. I'm uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so no, no, Justin no. That's, Seitz, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Go on. Sorry. So Justin Seats is um, is a longtime OG um, in, and Tim Arnold, longtime OG is in kind of the offensive security world. And so, yes. Yeah, so if you're going to learn a scripting language, you have basically three options. You can use the built-in scripting languages in, you know, in Linux and Unix, which is most predominantly Bash, and you can try to script things together with that using command line tools. Then, you know, you have that choice of either choosing Python or Go. Usually, are the two predominant languages that most red teamers and bug bounty hunters will choose one that they like better. If you want to be on the cutting edge and you just want to dive into that, probably Go. If you want to be, if you want an introduction to scripting that graduates from just using the command line, um, it would be Python. That would be what I would tell new people, basically. Yeah. So Black Hat Python is one of the best resources when you get into Python coding for offensive security, basically, for, for pen testers. And the last one is Black Hat Bash. Yeah, that's coming out, at, well, hopefully soon, if it's not out already at the time of Tom, this video goes live, yeah. It's going to be out in fall 2024. I think you can get it for pre-order early access too right now. So like you can get the review copy. It may not be exactly the same as the release copy, but Dolev and Nick, who again wrote the other book, the Black Hat um, GraphQL one, are writing a, a, a Bash book. And Bash is my love. I love scripting things together in Bash. I am highly excited for this book. I talked to Nick when I went to RSA earlier this last year when he was in development of this book. And he was talking about some of the things he was covered. And um, I can't wait for it to come out, honestly. Um, it'll be uh, it'll be sitting on my desk. And um, I can't wait for this one to come out. Because a lot of times, you know, writing a whole program or, 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 um, or script in offensive security to do one thing, one thing very well, it, you know, it might be a waste of, you know, kind of effort in some cases. In some cases, you just want to use Bash and and basically, you know, with bubble gum and popsicle sticks, put something together and uh, script together two two tools or work with some output for some tools, change it into other output that other tools can use. Bash is the ultimate um, scripting language for pretty much pen testers and hackers. Okay, so this one I can almost guarantee that you didn't have on any of your lists yet um, that nobody talked about, but um, this one is Z Shano's methodology. Have you heard of this one yet? Yep. No. Oh, no, you have no. List. Okay. No, no. I was going to say I haven't. It's not. It's not on my list. No. So Z Shano is uh, one of the million dollar hackers on Hacker One. Uh, he is a phenomenal web application tester, basically, and he's very well known in the bug bounty hunting scene. Um, and he runs his own site um, with a CTF challenge, but he gives out this version. It's a seventy-one page version of his methodology, absolutely free, talking about how he approaches um, finding input validation bugs and cross-site scripting and 
you know, all kinds of other web bugs. Um, but he is really a master at cross-site scripting. His methodology, very similar to the one I teach in my class too. So this is a free resource where you can get, you know, one of the best um, security testers in the world has written kind of about how he, he approaches things. And it is very down to earth. Like uh, Sean is, is so down to earth when he tries to explain how you find these things. He's not overly using technical jargon. He's just like, hey, I look at a website and I think about like where things will be and then this is how I choose that thing. And then this is what I do to that thing. And um, it's a really fresh way of teaching as well. Nice. Um, and so I like his methodology. Many of my students also love this me- this print resource as well. So it is available at bugbountyhunter.com under his methodology slash Zsana's methodology. I know he's doing a revamp of it too. He's going to add some stuff coming up, I think, in 2024. So that's that's coming up. That's great. Back into the soft skills arena is um, is actually one of my acquaintances and friends, Andy Gill. Less soft skills, but more of like industry kind of stuff. And so uh, Andy wrote, uh, Andy is a longtime pen tester, been part of many of the most successful consultancies in the world, and um, also has been a longtime DEF CON goon as well. So, you know, one of the people who walks around the hallways and you know, tells you to get back in line and helps you find where to go and stuff like that. So, um, so Andy wrote this book called Breaking into Information Security, Learning the Ropes. Just like the pen tester bl- blueprint from Phil, um, it's, it's very much accompanies your journey into being a junior or having zero knowledge, finding a job, you know, getting your foot in the door, understanding what your first assignments will be, um, how to succeed in those things, how to, you know, uh, basically put yourself forward as like a professional in the offensive security world. And so, um, Andy has two books. He has this one, Breaking into Information Security, Learning the Ropes 101. And it's a, you know, it's a pay what you can book. So that's really valuable for people who don't have a high budget. And then he has the new one, which just come out, which is called Expanding Your Security Horizons, um, Learning the Ropes 102, which came out recently. And so this is the sequel to that with kind of wider topics, uh, you know, basically diving into like, okay, you want to specialize now in your career. Maybe you'll want to be a mobile application tester. Maybe you'll want to specialize in web. Maybe you'll specialize in databases. You know, there's a lot of offshoots of security that you can end up in. Um, and so he talks about that. And really, these topics don't get talked about a lot um, when people are like, oh, I want to get into security, right? And there are a hundred yeah. little offshoots of what you can do. And and no conference talk I've ever seen maps it out really well to say, okay, well, like, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, maybe you could be one of these people. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff, maybe you could be one of these people. A story I have around That's here is, is I was a, I was a career pen tester as part of HP for many years, and um, I led as the director um, of offensive security at HP. I led our pen testing teams and our mobile app assessment teams, but I had also played a lot of CTF, and so I had played CTF with uh, with a group called Shellfish, which is uh, you know back in the day it was mostly um, the University of California Santa Barbara, which was where I lived. So I played CTF with them many years. One of the guys there who was the head of um, of their stuff, uh, the head of their hacking lab and the head of their CTF team at the time, um, I was really good friends with him. And so, you know, I kept on, we'd go, I'd go to his house after work and talk about, you know, kind of the stuff I was doing, hacking into these networks and stuff. And he was amazed because there was a big delta between what they were learning in college and um, doing for CTFs, which is mostly binary exploitation, and what I was doing in the real world, which was network penetration testing. And so they... The, you know, he didn't really know any of this stuff. But then you know, the day came when he f- got out of college and he wanted you know, a real job. And so I said, come work for us. And it turned out that he hated career pen testing because it's consulting. And he didn't really yeah. want to deal with people that much. And, um, and then like the type of work that we did wasn't what he was used to and, and really not the specialty that we wanted to do. And so these books, as well as Phil's books, will try to guide you into understanding what you might like and what you can make a sustainable career as well. I like that because it's confusing when you start out, right? Yeah, it's really confusing. Yeah. And you only know after you've been in it for a little while that you maybe hate something. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's so many options. It's, and I, I, I'll, I've got a bunch of questions near the end. So you you carry yeah. on, Jason, and then I'll throw some questions at you. All right. So I know you asked me to bring my books, right? And the, so those are print resources yeah. that you know are PDFs or books. But I brought a whole bunch more, and I hope that's okay right. with everyone. Of course. Yeah, of course. There was just a whole bunch of stuff in my slides and things that I have bookmarked that I think I think everybody should really you know, use, and, and most of them are free. So hopefully that's that's a good benefit here. That's amazing, Jason. I really appreciate you sharing your, your experience. No, it's great. No, no worries. 
Uh, the next one I have is um, it's it's a wiki. So basically, we have a couple of these really great all-encompassing wiki projects in the offensive security realm. And the first one I want to talk about is Pentex, Pentest Book by six to does now six to does in our industry he writes a whole bunch of tools he's a career pen tester um he writes one of the best recon frameworks out there which is called recon for the win but he has basically taken all of this information and knowledge on the internet for offensive security testing and turned it into a public wiki book and so you can go to his site and there is a ton of like notes and information around um, different web attacks. He's got a whole bunch of resources bookmarked in here. He's got a whole bunch of syntax. And so it's a living document for using certain tools and doing certain tasks and collecting resources. This is one that I keep bookmarked because um, he's he's got a lot a lot of information about fuzzing strings and way to, ways to execute different attacks. And so um, and he just puts all of his knowledge in here. So this one is kept up to date. When you talk about things like this, like these wiki books, the first one most people will talk about uh, other than pen test book is hack tricks. And hack tricks is also the same kind of idea. It's a wiki book online, uh, totally free. And it's got methodology for, you know, what you do for an external pen test, an internal pen test, a Wi-Fi pen test, a phishing methodology. And these resources, unlike the books that we've talked about, they're always getting updated by multiple people. Um, and so these are really useful, even in the defensive stuff. I mean, um, the guys at Hacktricks put a whole bunch of hardening guides too together for Linux, as well as uh, mobile testing. So whatever they're into, as their career progresses, they start putting into this book and they invite other people to um, to grab it, to grab, you know, like this information from their, from their wiki, which is absolutely free. So it's, it's, it's really cool. You can also like search exploits on here. Like you can, you can use the search bar to like search a certain style of exploit. There's a whole bunch of pre-built searches here that you can ask it to. So it's uh, hack tricks is very well known inside of the offensive security community as being kind of a great desk reference to, to have around. That's brilliant. So the next two are actually fuzzing lists. And um, one I work with, um, and it's hosted by my friend Daniel Meisler, and another one um, is is very similar. But when you get into offensive security testing, eventually you end up having to fuzz something, which which means throw a whole bunch of attack traffic at it and see what happens. And that's a lot of what hacking is, actually. It's just throwing stuff against the wall and seeing what happens. A lot of people don't like to hear that, but that actually is what it is sometimes. <laughs> and so uh, one of the resources that, you know, two of the resources that you should have uh, bookmarked for this is Seclis. And um, the other one I'm going to talk about is Payload All the Things. But um, I'll tell you the story around how Seclis came to be and how most of these fuzzing projects came to be was um, I told it in my class and people couldn't believe it. So so Dan and I were career pen testers at uh, HP. We were basically hired uh, by a, a client to do um, an internal penetration test of a whole bunch of applications and their network. And so we get on site, and this is many, many years ago, and we get on site and the clients, you know, we bring our laptops as consultants and we get on site and the client says, you can't use those. And we're like, what? And they're like, yeah, we're a controlled environment. You cannot use your own laptops here. Here are these laptops you can use <laughs> for testing. So they're out the window because all of our tools, all of our stuff, right? We can't use a, a VPS or a cloud hosted box um, because that doesn't have access to the internal network and no way were they going to let that happen. So we get these new laptops and they're the only ones we can use and um, they don't have anything on them. Then we say, hey, like we need these tools. We need like Burp Suite and we need um, some other stuff to do our work. And they're like, no, it takes six months for us to requisition new tools installed to the image. And so me and Dan are just sitting there like, okay, what do we what do we do? And we had a team with us too. It wasn't just me and Dan. It was a whole bunch of awesome people on the HP team. And so we're like, what do we what do we do? Like, you know, like I mean, you can hack things manually without Burp Suite, but to hack a whole app manually and feel like you got great coverage and to hack a network and write all your stuff from scratch, it is a tremendous workload. What we ended up doing was like, hey, okay, so we need this one tool. We need we need Burp Suite at the very least. Um, and so we ended up convincing them that was like the only tool we we would need. And so they were okay with that. And this is before Burp Suite even came with built-in fuzzing lists. And so what we, we did is we went out to the community and all these open source security scanning projects and some closed source commercial ones too. And we dumped all of their attack strings out of their products and into text files. And then we could reinstitute the type of scanning that an enterprise scanner would do with just Burp and these text files. And so that's how Seclis was born, basically. Um, and so we use that to great success on this test. Um, and that's hacker ingenuity, right? It's like figure out a way yeah, to solve the story, problem. Yeah. Right? And so Seclis is a collection of 
fuzzing lists, common passwords. It's got a whole bunch of stuff in it. And so you can, it comes by default installed on uh, Kali now. So if you look in Kali, Seclist will come pre-installed. And if you go inside, you know, some of these things, you can see that we're categorizing like um, different text files you can use to brute force things or to fuzz things. And so we go to uh, like web payloads for fuzzing here. You can see that we have SQL injection payloads. So, you know, a quick scan of SQL injection should include sending these types of strings to the application. And you can use Burp to do all this kind of stuff. And uh, next time I come back, maybe I'll show you guys kind of like what that workflow works like, looks like in Burp. That'd be but, great. So this, we started this, and this continues to be run to this day, mostly by a friend of ours, Got Milk, And he's a, a very well-known hacker in the community. Dan and I, you know, kind of sit back and um, just moderate a little bit of the project. But a derivative of our project is called Payload All the Things. And Payload All the Things is not only useful because it does that fuzzing uh, payload collection like we do, but they also offer a ton of context around vulnerabilities. And you can learn a lot about specific vulnerability types in web application and red team testing by just looking at their, um, at their markdown. So if you go in here and you look at Payload All the Things and you go to like Mimikatz, they're more of a holistic like guide on how to use the tool and how to do certain things with the tool and with syntax and stuff like that. So this is one of the most up-to-date GitHub projects for offensive security when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, you can go down to like, let me see here, if I go to directory traversal and AppSec, it's got a big summary, um, you know, what tools you can use, the basic explanation, the type of fuzz strings you can use. And so payload all the things is a really valuable resource to have bookmarked as a new web security tester or a new red teamer, basically. That's amazing, Jason. Yeah. So these are the kind of things I keep bookmarked. And then there's some other stuff which I just generally use to keep me informed. There are a whole bunch of newsletters that exist in security that personally I read every week. Uh, so you subscribe to them. They're free. You get an email every week. And so the, the first one is actually, I mentioned Dan, and I've worked a lot with Dan, is his newsletter on supervised learning. I, you know, I read every week for security news. Um, so understanding like who got popped this week, you know, what big, you know, of methods and security were bid this week, breaches and stuff like that. He also does a tremendous amount of research on AI, which, you know, as a security person, I know that our industry is about to become heavily entwined with AI. And so Dan does a ton of on, on AI. And so I have to keep up to date with that too. Dan's newsletter uh, is one of the ones I absolutely, it's, it's so bite-sized too. He tries to make it so digestible so that you could listen to it in your car. Um, he has an audio version of it. You could listen to it in your car. And um, you know, by the time you get to work, you could have pretty much got an update on everything that happened during the week in security. So I like unsupervised learning. I also like TLDR sec by Clint Gibbler which is very um, offensive or is very um, AppSec focused. So application security and web testing and web defense. Um, but also Clint covers a whole bunch of topics in his. And Clint covers a lot of resources, less, less news and more um, like conference talks and uh, tool releases and a whole bunch of stuff. And so TLDRSec was kind of born from Clint went to um, a whole bunch of conferences and he did he did this thing. He's like, I watched all 44 talks from AppSec Cali 2019. And this is actually <laughs> where it came. And here's what I learned out of it. And here's what I liked. And so that's, that's what TLDR sec was born from. And so um, I love Clint's content. Um, so TLDR sec keeps me up to date on tools and conference talks and kind of, you know, just all the stuff I need to know in AppSec, basically. There's two more, or there's three more, actually. So um, Integrity is a bug bounty platform, and they write uh, a newsletter called Bug Bytes. And Bug Bytes basically goes over all things um, bug bounty um, that you might want to read. And if you're new into, you know, getting into security testing, one thing to understand is that, like, you know, following the bug bounty scene, even if you don't want to be a bug bounty hunter, but even if you're just going to do AppSec testing or red teaming, is supremely valuable. Because they are on the forefront of hacking real applications and they're writing about it all the time. And they're writing about the tools they use and the methodologies they use. So even if you don't want to do bug bounty hunting, these next three newsletters, I behoove you to sign up for because they're amazing resources just to keep your hacking fresh. Um, so Bug Bytes is one. It's written by Insider PhD, who's a very known uh, content creator in the bug bounty and hacking space. Um, she puts together Bug Bytes for integrity. The next one is um, Secure Bee's High Five, which is very much the same type thing. It breaks down um, breaks down bug bounty findings, you know, news in the bug bounty industry, 
uh, methodologies that people published, really keeping its, you know, kind of finger on the pulse of, you know, kind of um, hacking. High five is really good. And the last one I recommend is Greg's Bug Bounty Reports Explained. And Greg does a really great job of um, his in his newsletter breaking down um, things like Peter does and like uh, Vicky does in their books. But his his newsletter happens every week. So he breaks down, you know, case studies for RCE vulnerabilities. So he'll go over all of the bug bounty platforms. And, and this is the same way I approach research. He'll go over all the bug bounty platforms and find every RCE bug that existed for the last year. And then he will spreadsheet them out and be like, okay, what was the way they did this? What was the, you know, the fuzz string they used? You know, what were the interesting things about this vulnerability? You know, and uh, he will take a very scientific view of basically hacking and and parse it for people to read in his newsletter and his uh, his YouTube, basically. And then the last one is, um, this is Matt J's Vulnerable U. And so Vulnerable U is another news um, focused um, one, but also... What a lot of people don't talk about in offensive security is it can be a very burnout centric job sometimes um, at any IT role can be really. Matt talks a lot about dealing with being a security professional from that point of view and having a long lasting career um, and how to deal with kind of the burnout and depression that can come with dealing with, you know, the problem of security. You know, and sometimes security can seem impossible when you finally do get the job. Right. And you realize that everybody's vulnerable. Everybody could get hacked. There's no perfect security measure. And even if there is, can you implement it at the place you work at? Maybe not. Maybe it's just not possible. <laughs> and so Matt goes over news and um, and a slice of, of kind of the personal side of InfoSec. And so those are the newsletters that I read every week. Um, I'll usually try to read Dan's at the beginning of the week, Clint's at the front end, the bug bounty ones I'll try to burn through in the middle of the week, and then I'll read Vulnerable You at the end of the week. And that's kind of my... Um, you know, hour I put aside every morning for one of these things or half an hour or something like that. I love that because the problem with books, like we said, is they go out of date. But this is great because yeah. you're giving us yeah. like up up to the like week, if you like, or like up to the day up information. Yeah, up to the second. I mean, uh, one of Matt's featured ones was like all the news about MGM getting hacked and how it happened and Caesars getting hacked the day after it happened. And Matt oh, has great. a lot of people. He has a lot of uh, that's been around forever. He's part of White Hat, which is a, a very prominent consultancy in the information security scene. Uh, but he knows everybody. And so he gets the inside scoop on a lot of these things that not a lot of people do. Um, and he does the research. And so it's really kind of investigative journalism as well uh, for you know some of these things, which is which is cool. That's fantastic. The last section I have for everybody. But wait, there's is, more. I love it. There's more. Yeah, yeah. No, I got, I got a little <laughs> bit more. Okay, so we will start over here. So if you're into you know, web testing, or you want to do some of your own research, um, HackerOne and BugCrowd have these two feeds. And so when people submit a bug bounty report to a customer, at the end of it getting accepted or not getting accepted, um, they can ask, can I, can I um, publicize this vulnerability for everybody to read about as, you know, like a disclosure, basically a security disclosure. And many customers will say, no, it, this is private thing between you and me. But some customers will say yes. On HackerOne and BugCrowd, they keep a stream of these going. And so they are actually some of the best places to learn about vulnerabilities and how they take place in the real world. And so this is Hacktivity by HackerOne. It doesn't cost anything to use it. You don't even have to be signed up for Hacker One to check this out, but you can go through here and look at like, okay, so this is a critical bug for unauthenticated remote access to testing endpoint. And you can click in here, and this one is highly redacted. So uh, you won't get a lot of information here, but in some of these, you will get actual full information on um, what the researcher did and what they found. Um, and so you can just kind of click around through here, you know, um, a security advisory, they found a CVE. You can also see the Discord you know, the talk between the bug bounty hunter and the program and what they talk about and et cetera, et cetera. And so spending time parsing activity, especially for bugs that you want to learn about. So let's, you know, let's say SQL injection is something that you're having a hard time wrapping your head around um, or you want to keep up to date on. You can search activity and bug crowd has one that's called CrowdStream. Uh, they're the same idea. And you can learn a lot, a lot about um, basically, uh, these type of these type of bugs. So, um, crowd streams are not all um, hyperlinked. Um, sometimes it's just to you know just disclose that hey, Lululemon, basically you know there was a twenty seven hundred dollar P one on them, 
um, but there's no detail. But if you scroll down through here, you'll get some that have like a sufficient amount of detail as well. So um, so those are like if you want to take research into your own hands and do like the CrowdStream and Hacktivity are really great. And then Gwendolyn Lekuik, who is a prominent um, tools maker in the offensive security scene, um, he writes a couple of really good tools I talk about in my class. He has a site called offsec.tools. And one of the things that you can struggle with in your journey of offensive security is like there are new tools like we talked about coming out all the time. And so what Gwendol tries to do is he has this site where you can either submit a tool or he keeps his finger on the pulse of all these open source tools that come out for um, stuff. And he has a whole site that'll basically just uh, if you can you can search for any type of tool or anything and he'll tell you everything that they know about a tool that exists in that way and which ones were most updated recently and which ones are featured and preferred. And so um, his site is a really great way to keep on top of the open source tooling that happens in the um, in the area of kind of offensive security. And I promise That's I'm almost brilliant. done. I promise. No, but I, have, I, I love this. I love this. I wouldn't be um, I wouldn't be, you know, like uh, being honest about kind of like, you know, there are some for pay resources for, um, you know, learning about vulnerabilities and the two most commonly referred to be my students. Right. Because I run a class, too. But they're like, hey, I really like. I basically hack the box and try hack me, right? And so those two platforms have come a long way from just being CTF style things. Now they have whole learning tracks to um, to different things. And so if you pay, which you know we, we're trying to keep it open source for new people, and like you know, but um, if you have a little bit of money to invest, they have whole learning um, tracks and labs that you can do at, in both uh, Hack the Box Academy and Try Hack Me. And so you can see that they have like lots of learning, and then they have a CTF associated to each learning track. And so these are really good for the web stuff. You can get absolutely free um, what we talked about um, WebSec Academy with Portsvigger, but that just covers web security. These platforms cover all kinds of security topics like red team fundamentals and, and they have different content too than WebSec Academy. So if you get to the point where you do have some cash to float around or you're, you know, you're a, an intern and your employer, maybe will sponsor some training. These are two that my students highly recommend is try hack me and um, hack the box Academy. The other one is uh, Pentester Lab by Louis. And um, this one also has a pro version and some free stuff that you can grab. Um, you self-host a whole bunch of exercises. He also goes over a lot of CVE. So if a new CVE comes out and you want to understand how that CVE works, he is usually one of the first ones to build a challenge for it, uh, Louis at Pentester Lab. So um, these are some great platforms to graduate to later on in you know in your kind of career that's everything i got for you guys it's everything that was in my course basically you got like one fourth of my course you know the first day and so um you know resources i highly recommend to to grab you're missing you're missing yours though jason that's like the most important uh, <laughs> you got to yeah, share your so, website and got to share right. your training come on all right so so my personal training is uh the bug hunters methodology live if you go here down to course info you can see my syllabus so it's for red teamers and bug bounty hunters we do a full day of reconnaissance. So we talk about uh, kind of what I consider edge, like bleeding edge reconnaissance against a company, whether you're a red team or you are a bug bounty hunter. So we've spent a full day on that. And then we spend a full day on application analysis. And I don't call it application hacking because it's not exactly hacking. Basically, I talked about it earlier, but you know, many, 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 many people will um, grow up on a try hack me or a WebSec Academy or a pen tester lab or a hack the box um, curriculum and they'll feel pretty confident, but then they'll come into the industry, get a real job and they'll get thrown on an enterprise web application, which has thousands of parameters, thousands of dynamic pages. And there's this really big feeling of when you start getting lost um, on your first assessment. And if you don't have somebody mentoring you, it can be really hard to understand where you start. And so application analysis is the idea of, okay, how do I, how do I tackle an application where do I look? What are the things that are most likely vulnerable? How do I attack them? Um, you know, how do I do content discovery and automation? And so that is my second day of my class. So I, you know, I talk about big questions that you should ask about the app and you know how you should answer those questions. I talk about heat mapping an application for commonly vulnerable places and, and fuzzing and, and stuff like that. So and then a lot of tips and tricks for each vulnerability class. So IDOR, XSS, SSRF, XXE. So, so that's that's my course. I do that course once every quarter and uh, it's live only. And so uh, students seem to really like it. So we're, we'll do another one in, I think, February. You're way too humble. I mean, one of the things you said that you do is you always update it, right? It's like new content every time. Every time it's new content. So 
as I work and, you know, in my day job at, at Butterbot and as I, you know, talk with people in the industry and even as I teach the previous courses, I learn new stuff. I update the slides. That's what I care about as a trainer, right? Like I want to be on the cut, or not as a trainer, but as a practitioner, I want to be on the cutting edge of, you know, some of these techniques and tactics and learning. And so um, I recommend, uh, you know, like I, I basically update the slides to, re- to, you know, show what I've been doing and what others have recommended as well. Tell us about the company. My company is Buttobot and um, we are an adversarial emulation and simulation company. So we do six month and a year long red team campaigns, which includes threat intel, attack surface management, social engineering, external testing, and internal testing. And so we're basically like your red team as a service. So you hire my team, which I lead, and you hire Buttobot, and we come on and onboard and help you run a campaign if you can't afford your own red team yourself, or if you want to validate your blue team or even validate the red team that you currently have as checking all the nooks and crannies. So um, that's kind of what we we do there. I love that. I'll put those links below. They can, People can also follow you on Twitter. That's a, or X as it's called these days. That's a great place to interact with you, right? Uh, I am at Jay Haddix on X, so you can follow me there. And I tweet all the time about um, hacking stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can follow me. And then uh, I'll also retweet commonly people who I think are, you know, really moving conversation, training, you know, techniques forward in both bug bounty hunting and red teaming. And so you can follow people that I retweet because it's an endorsement of, you know, kind of how cool I think they are as well. That's brilliant. I've got a bunch of questions, Jason. The uh, I'm going to, th- some of them are difficult. So <laughs> let's see how it goes. Which the common question is that people tend to ask is which book should I get first? If you're coming out of IT and you kind of have a feel of like, okay, my, my first place at my current job or the jobs I'm going to look for are penetration testing. And it's it's more network and web it's more network than it is web application penetration testing. Then um, I might use some of the free resources like the wikis I talked about. I talked about which yeah. have a lot of open source knowledge around penetration testing. Um, the red team field, the red team field guide, and like, all the red team resources that I m- mentioned in the book section could also be tremendously uh, good for you. If you're moving into, you know, you're going to be a web application penetration tester, that'll be the first job you get after you're getting out of IT, or you're going to be shadowing someone that does that. Um, It absolutely would have to be WebSec Academy, which is free, which is great. And then supplement that with your first purchase of a book being the, being um, one of the three I talked about, but I would probably get the Web Application Hackers Handbook as a companion guide to um, the free WebSec Academy, which is online. That'll give you a strong foundation if you can complete all the labs um, and you read the book for web application testing. And hopefully your job has you writing along with somebody teaching you as well. Um, and then you can move on to, you know, Hack the Box, uh, Try Hack Me, Pentester Lab to get exposure to exotic versions of those vulnerabilities you might see. But Really, those are the, the standard ones I would start with. I love that. I mean, it's so there's so much freely available or low cost. I mean, when I started, there was none of this, right? And so we had to beg, borrow, and steal, you know, like everything, uh, any content that existed around hacking. Now there is a world of YouTubers, platforms, um, open source security research that people can learn from. It's just, it's almost the opposite problem that we had back in the day is like, yeah. now there's too much. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, which yeah. one do I use? Right. And so, exactly. you know, for, for web hacking, it's, it's gotta be WebSec Academy. It is, it is so good. Um, and it, it's amazing. It's free too. Like people would pay for that, but that, you know, luckily they keep it free. So you mentioned network, network hacking. I mean, that's close to my heart, you know, coming from my background. Is there any good book that you can recommend for hacking networks or protocols, stuff like that? So James Forshaw, absolute OG in the security um, world. And so there's this idea of, a, you know, basically, um, if you're going to attack a protocol that exists at the server level, um, and that's not a web application, um, first of all, there's a whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you should know about, like what services run on which ports and how to attack those. This is more about like, oh, you have a custom network protocol you're looking at, and you need to understand how its security works. This book is probably one of the only ones I've seen talk about um, the methodology of looking into a protocol on the network side of hacking. And, you know, that can lead to great stuff. If you can man in the middle or decrypt or cause some kind of fault in a network protocol, you can completely undermine the security of an entire network. Um, and so uh, this is one that um, that I recommend if you're getting into kind of the network 
networky area. Jason, I really want to thank you for sharing. Just for everyone who's watching, I've put other interviews with Jason below. I've put all of the links that he's mentioned, well, hopefully all of them below. Let, let me know in the comments if I missed something. Jason, I really want to thank you for sharing. You know, you said that when you started, it was so hard to get information, but now you're helping the next generation or people who are trying to get into this field. And I really want to thank you, you know, for making it so easy for all of us. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I can only imagine that when I was a noob, right? And everybody starts off as a noob. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. It's it's so hard to get started. And so having someone to to give you at least a, a little bit of a roadmap can be really valuable to your career. I appreciate it, Jason. Thanks. Thanks.